Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the unusual type of stars that have been discovered back in 2010 known as Zirconium stars. Today you're going to find out what these stars are all about and you'll hopefully learn something new. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button right now because there's so many more videos coming in the future. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So back in 2010, uh, researchers from Northern Ireland, specifically from Armagh University, discovered this really unusual star that uh, was emitting a little bit more than they actually asked for. Basically, this particular star was emitting quite a lot of zirconium. Now, zirconium, if you've never heard of this before, is what jewelers on Earth usually make false diamonds from, uh, specifically zirconium dioxide crystals, also known as cubic zirconia. Now, this mineral is quite common on Earth, and we do produce quite a lot of it, but this particular star seems to have a lot more of it, and specifically in the so-called upper atmosphere of this star. Now, what's really interesting about it is that this is actually the first type of a star that we've discovered so far, but in Space Engine, if you actually look up carbon stars, you will find quite a lot of different zirconium stars randomly or procedurally generated. Now, this particular star is named LS414116. Unfortunately, it's not present in Space Engine, so I actually have to take a look at the other star here. And as you can see, this particular star actually has quite a lot of planets orbiting around it as well. Um, but what's really interesting is that there is actually quite a lot of other unusual elements that are in the atmosphere of the star, specifically uh, strontium, germanium, and yttrium, all of which are very, very rare uh, in such high amounts in star's atmosphere. Now, so okay, so we know that zirconium is there and we know that there's a star that has a lot of zirconium, but what exactly is happening here and are we actually going to find a lot more of these stars in the future? Well, let's actually go back a little bit and just briefly talk about the evolution of stars. Now, stars that are smaller in mass, even smaller than our sun, usually at some point reach the stage when they become um, a very giant red uh, red giant essentially they become a very large object and slowly throw off their outer shell into the outer space this will also happen to our sun at some point and then what's going to be left behind eventually is what's going to be known as the white dwarf now we've talked about this previously and you can check out some of the other videos where i actually go through this simulation in a lot of detail, but this is not really what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the interstage. So in between the red giant stage and in between the white dwarf stage, there is actually another stage uh, informally known as a hot sub dwarf. Now this is actually a phase in evolution of many, many stars in our galaxy, in, in our universe. And um, when this happens, so the star starts behaving very interestingly. It starts throwing off some of the inner materials and some of them kind of start to poof up to the surface and uh, produce various sort of colors and various spectral lines that we can then detect from our planet Earth. And this is exactly what we're seeing here. So right before this particular star, LS414116, becomes a white dwarf, it's going to poof up some of its inner material, and um, most of it will come out to the outside, then it will probably sink, then something else will come out, and the color will change again, and it will keep doing this until eventually it becomes a white dwarf. Now, it currently is basically burning a lot of helium, so don't get confused, this star is not made from zirconium. It just has a little bit of zirconium in its upper atmosphere, which make, makes it uh, look a little bit different and gives it a little bit of a different color. And there's quite a lot of various carbon stars that have um, a variety of different colors depending on the materials in their upper atmosphere, but in this particular case it's actually zirconium that's the most prevalent. And within the next thousand or so years, this zirconium will very likely sink to the bottom of the star, or not to the bottom, but basically it will sink below the upper atmosphere and something else will come out and possibly change its color until eventually this will become a typical regular white dwarf, a star that essentially will mostly contain carbon and oxygen. And in most cases, there is usually more oxygen than carbon, but if there is more carbon than oxygen, these stars will become known as the carbon stars. And here's actually some of them in Space, space Engine as well. They do look a little bit different, but I'm not sure if this is actually a very realistic representation because they do have a very mobile atmosphere that does change quite a lot. It doesn't look as static as it does in Space Engine, but it, it does look kind of cool nevertheless. 
so yes, if it has more carbon, it becomes a carbon star, and sometimes this carbon turns into zirconium, and uh, sometimes this actually becomes a zirconium star, which is, um, if you look around in Space Engine, you'll actually quite, uh, you'll find quite a few of them around. But in reality, we've only just found one, and so we kind of have an understanding of this as a very temporary stage in the formation of a white dwarf. So it's not really a true star, it's just sort of an evolutionary stage that uh, is known as a zirconium star. And so it's actually quite possible that maybe even our sun will undergo the same stage in its evolution many, many billions of years from now. Um, but we don't really know and because we don't really understand how exactly um, this happens and what exactly goes on inside those stars that makes them throw out certain elements, specifically in this case zirconium, and why other stars don't seem to do that. Because so far this is actually the only one we've found that has such a very high concentration of zirconium in it. But I'm sure in the next few years we'll discover more and we we'll might even discover some of the other unusual evolutionary um, stages that might even have other elements that will give stars even other colors. Now zirconium makes it look uh, quite interesting and sparkly, carbon makes it look very dark and soothy, but if we discover something that makes it really awesome and purple, I'll be really 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 happy. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. So this is essentially all about zirconium stars, or I guess most of the things you need to know about zirconium stars and what they actually are. If you know something else that I haven't mentioned, please post it in the comments below so we can make another video about these beautiful giants that we can talk about in one of the future videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone you think might like these videos. And don't forget to possibly leave a comment with something really cool to say. Or don't. You know what? If it's not cool, don't say it. Or maybe do. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.